and the preamble is adopted on 26th November uh, 1949 on the same day which, on which the constitution is also adopted. So basically uh, the preamble Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus IAS. So today we are going to uh, discuss our second topic in our 95 days prelims challenge. Right friends, uh, today the topic for our discussion is preamble of the constitution. So as you all know, this is very favorite topic for the UPSC examination. Over the time, many number of questions have been asked from this topic. As you all know, this is a very small topic, right? Still. There are a lot of questions have been asked in the prelims examination. So try to focus and try to gain as much knowledge as possible. Right. So uh, first we will see the original text of the preamble. So and try to uh, know what are all the things uh, that are presented in the preamble. So first the preamble starts with we the people of India. So what this phrase shows, this shows the people are the authority, source of authority uh, in India. So the authority comes from people themselves. So this uh, the phrase, we the people of India shows that people are the real source of authority in India. And uh, the second phrase, sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic and republic. So this phrase shows, uh, says the nature of Indian state. So, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, a state we are having in India? We are having a sovereign state, a sec a socialist state, a secular state. Secular means religion and uh, state affairs are different, separated from each other. And democratic state, right? India is a democratic state, and India is a republic state. So, these five words, five phrases, uh, phrases uh, basically tell us the nature of Indian state. And the third we will see the ideals of constitution. So what are those ideals? The ideals are justice. The constitution strives, strives to give people, people of India justice. What kind of justice? Justice of social, economic and political justice. And uh, the constitution of uh, India gives people of, uh, people of India liberty. What kind of liberty? Liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship. So this kind of this um, this kind of liberty that is being provided to people of India by the constitution. The third is equality. What kind of equality? Equality of status and of opportunity and uh, fraternity. So for fraternity basically means brotherhood. So friends. These words say the ideals of the constitution, what the constitution is going to achieve, right? And the fourth part is in our constituent assembly on 26th day of November 1949. So this uh, shows the date of adoption of the constitution. So basically these are the four things we will grasp from the original text of the preamble, right? Now we will try to understand the meaning and significance of preamble. So the preamble basically is a succinct, succinct statement for the uh, ideals and objectives for the constitution. Right friends, the preamble also shows the aspirations and the vision of the framers of the constitution. So basically the vision and the ideals of the our uh, founding fathers that has uh, incorporated in the preamble of the constitution. Right friends, uh, the preamble begins with the powerful phrase of we the people of India. So what it signifies? It signifies that people are the ultimate sovereignty, right? The ultimate sovereignty and power rests with the people of India. Right friends, uh, the preamble also declares the objectives of the constitution. Means what the constitution strives to achieve those object objectives are declared in the preamble of the constitution of India. Right friends. It also gives the fundamental principles through which the country is governed. Right friends. This is the significance of the preamble. 
right uh, similarly preamble is called as the soul of the constitution because whatever the articles or items mentioned in the constitution uh, the source the spirit comes from the preamble itself so that's why uh, the preamble is called as the source of the or the soul of the constitution right friends uh, the preamble often acts as the guiding light for the law makers who will make the laws for the governance of the country uh, and uh, for policy makers also so the preamble acts as a guiding line guiding light for the law makers and policy makers it also reflects the collective wisdom of collective wisdom and aspirations of the founding father so basically the preamble gives the aspirations and the vision of the founding fathers of india right friends now we will see incorporation in the constitution so the preamble is attached incorporated and attached in the beginning of the constitutional itself and the preamble is adopted on 26th november uh, 1949 on the same day which on which the constitution is also adopted so basically uh, the preamble is also adopted on the same day on which the constitution is also adopted friends uh, please try to remember this date because the examiner may try to confuse you by giving different different names please try to remember the preamble is also adopted on the same day on which the constitution is also adopted right friends uh, the preamble is placed as uh, i have already told it is placed in beginning of the constitution so this shows the uh, importance and significance of the uh, preamble of the constitution it also has substantive significance means it has very importance and uh, we will see in, later in this presentation in this class uh the honorable supreme court has time and again invoked uh, preamble to give its judgment so it has a lot of substantive significance preamble has a lot of substantive significance right friends uh when we study about the pre preamble we also should know about the objectives resolution so objective resolution is uh it is precursor to the preamble so actually many principles many points mentioned in the preamble that have actually come from the uh, objectives resolution so it has actually moved by jawaharlal nehru on december 13 1946 please try to remember this date so objectives resolution general um, basically introduced on december 13 1946 okay friends uh, what the objectives uh, resolution contained it contained contained foundational principles and objectives that would guide the country after the independence right friends many of the principles that are there in the objectives resolution that have been directly taken into preamble of the constitution so in this way many points that are there in the objectives resolution uh, made way into the constitution so particularly in the preamble of the constitution right friends uh, now we will focus on the most important part important phrases in the preamble so first uh, first we will go uh, try to understand the source of authority i already briefly explained in the beginning of the class itself so this first phrase is uh, first uh, important phrase is about source of authority as i all, uh, as i already discussed the constitution starts with uh, a powerful phrase we the people of india so this shows that the people are the ultimate source of authority so the sovereignty lies in the people of india similarly it underscores the democratic foundation of the nation so when people the power comes from the people so basically the nature of state is democratic in nature right the phrase also uh, indicates the inclusive uh, nature of indian polity and society so basically the nature of indian society is inclusive nature so that also reflects in the phrase of we the people of india right so it also shows the collective will of the as will and aspirations of the diverse population of india so as we all know we have different races religions and uh, different cultures so this statement shows the collective will of all these diverse people so friends try to remember these phrases these may be lifted and Uh, can be asked as a point in the prelims questions. 
right friends now we will uh, see the second phase second uh, type of uh, phases that is about ideals of preamble so basically the constitution strives to provide justice liberty equality and fraternity so these phrases are mentioned in the constitution so justice first one is justice what kind of justice the constitution strives to provide the constitution strives to provide social economic and political justice for all citizens right basically the constitution is strives to provide these three kinds of justice so basically social and economic uh, justice is provided through dpsp direct to principles of state policy r4 right friends and political justice through fundamental rights right uh, the political justice is uh, try to provide through the fundamental rights which are mentioned in the part 3 of the constitution right friends similarly uh, the constitution strives to provide liberty what kind of liberty liberty of freedom of thought expression belief faith and worship so this kind of liberty the constitution strives to provide that is also mentioned in the preamble of the constitution right friends next the constitution also guarantees equality so that is equal treatment and opportunities to all individuals uh, irrespective of caste religion gender or socio economic status as we all seen a uh, people of india compri comprise of different uh, attributes like uh, races religion uh, regional differences are there so there will be no discrimination everybody is treated treated equally so that uh, we will see basically in articles of 14 15 and 16 when we discuss part 3 of the constitution we will see in detail about those articles right and uh, lastly uh, fraternity the constitution of india also strive to achieve fraternity basically fraternity means brotherhood right so with brotherhood we can achieve a harmonious and peaceful harmonious and peaceful uh, society it also uh, helps us in achieving unity and integrity of india so brotherhood brotherhood is a very very important concept please try to remember right friends uh, we will continue the uh, now we will see the third phase that is uh, nature of state earlier also i discussed so basically we will come to know about the nature of indian state through the words sovereignty sovereignty secularism socialism and uh, there are two more words that is democratic and republic so these five words through these five words we will come to know about the nature of indian state what kind of state that is uh, india he uh, india is having so sovereign means india is second to none so nobody is above the government of india so it is a uh, second to no country in the world so basically sovereign means that uh, that so india is basically independent country it has no one's external controls it is controlled by no one from externally so this is the meaning of sovereign state now india is also a secular state that is what uh, what secularism basically means secularism means separation of religion from affairs of the state so there is basically no relation between i mean the state and the religion are separated so that is the basic meaning of uh, secularism in country so basically india follows a different type of secularism right so basically in india the state is not completely different from uh, uh, the religion basically uh, the government or state can intervene 
as and when the requirement, I mean the uh, the issue comes, any religious uh, issue comes, basically intra-religious for intra-religious equality, the state can interfere. So we have basically a different uh, system of secularism when we compare to the uh, Western countries. When we discuss the part three of the Constitution, fundamental rights, we will uh, try to discuss in detail about that. In detail, in detail about that provision. Right. The third body, uh, third uh, word is socialism. So basically, the word socialism um, uh, uh, declares the in, uh, declares that India is a welfare state, and it shows that government plays a important proactive role in addressing the problems that are uh, problems that people of India are facing or going to face. So basically, the word socialism shows the welfare nature of the state. So basically, we are following a welfare, uh, welfare kind of uh, government, welfare based government so that is uh, known by the word socialism. The next two words are democracy and republic. So what basically democracy means? Democracy means people are actively represented in the government. So basically people, they elect. So basically elections are there. They elect their representatives. In the form of MPs and MLAs. So basically these are the representatives of people and they will be elected by the people. They go to the legislatures, uh, parliament and assembly and represent the voice of the people. So in this way, people are actively taking part in the government. So that's why we call India, Indian state as a democratic state. And the last word is Republic. Republic basically means the top post in the country that is open to all the citizens of India. Anyone can contest and become the head of the state. So in India, Indian case that is President so the president post is open to all the citizens of India, uh, subjected to certain conditions. So anyone can contest and become the president. So this shows the republic nature of the Indian state. So basically the head of the state uh, do not come as a hereditary and he is not a monarch. So he is elected uh, by the people. So these five words, they show the nature of Indian state. Right friends, uh, we have understood the four basic phrases that are mentioned in the constitution. Now we will try to understand the amendments in which the preamble is uh, involved. So, so the preamble is basically subjected to amendment only once, one time it has been amended that is through the 42nd amendment. 1976, Mrs. Gandhi was the Prime Minister. So, the uh, uh, preamble is basically amended only once and the three words, secular, socialist and integrity. These three words have been incorporated into the preamble of the constitution. Means, uh, this is very, very important information. It can, uh, this can come as a point in the prelims examination. Actually, it has already been asked. So the 42nd amendment and uh, the three words that are being incorporated through this amendment has been actually asked in the prelims examination. So there is a chance of asking it again. So please try to remember this information. Right. Now we will see the judicial pronouncements where the preamble is actively uh, invoked by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. So the first one is Berubari, uh, Berubari case. The question here is, Indian government uh, wanted to cede some territory to Pakistan. Actually, after independence, uh, the India has been partitioned into India and Pakistan. So there were many places which were, uh, I mean, falling in between India and Pakistan. So India 
try to uh, transfer some islands, Meruvari islands, to Pakistan. Pakistan. So, in this case, the Honorable Supreme Court in, um, invoked preamble and said that uh, uh, the Honorable Supreme Court extensively discussed the preamble. So, ascertain the objectives and uh, intent of the constitution. So, basically, the Honorable Supreme Court has taken the help of uh, preamble in interpreting this case. So, in this same case, the Honorable Supreme Court declared that preamble is not part of the constitution. So, because of this reason, it uh, declared that though uh, the preamble is attached to the constitution, it is not part of the constitution. So, it is uh, not, not justiciable. Means, no, uh, I mean, a person cannot go and ask, uh, go to court and ask that, please enforce preamble of the constitution. I mean, try to, um, try to realize all the points that are mentioned in the constitution. So, in the same, uh, at the same time, the Honorable Supreme Court also said that, but though the preamble is not part of the constitution, it is key to the constitution. So what is the meaning of this uh, phrase, key to the constitution? It means, we can better understand the constitution. We can better interpret the uh, provisions of the constitution by invoking, by taking help of the preamble. So, when we take the help of the preamble, we can better uh, understand the constitution of India. So, in this way, preamble acts as a key to the constitution. That is, uh, it is the meaning of the word key to the constitution. Right, friends? Uh, another case is Keshavananda Bharti case. Uh, you know very well from this uh, case, it came, uh, basic structure doctrine has uh, basically come from this case only. So, in this case, uh, case uh, the preamble is, uh, is actively invoked by Honorable Supreme Court to interpret the uh, case. So, basically, the uh, Supreme Court said that the basic structure concepts are also there in the preamble. So, that, that is what the Honorable Supreme Court has opened. So, it acknowledged, the Honorable Supreme Court acknowledged the importance of the preamble as reflecting the aspirations and objectives of the constitutions. So, in this case also, the Honorable Supreme Court has taken the help of preamble to uh, invoke this doctrine, basic structure doctrine. Reference the third case is Indira uh, Gandhi versus Raj Narayan case. So, this is the famous case uh, in which uh, Mrs. Gandhi, she had to uh, forego her uh, prime ministership because she has uh, declared, uh, declared not eligible to hold the position of a member of parliament. So, she cannot become, uh, she cannot become a member of parliament. So, she cannot, she cannot become a prime minister. So, this, uh, this is a very important course which uh, ha has lot of political significance. So, actually this case led to imposition of internal emergency. So, in this case also, deliberating this case also, uh, the court has invoked the preamble and asserted the principle of democracy and the rule of law and these principles also emerge from preamble of the constitution. Right, friends. It undermined the what uh, the court has opined. The actions taken by then government they have undermined the principles of uh, that are enshrined in the preamble of the constitution. So basically, the principles are democracy and rule of law. <coughs> right, friends. Uh, the other case is Union of India versus Raghuvar Singh. So basically, in this case, the uh, judiciary, the Supreme Court, was examining. Ninth schedule validity of the of ninth schedule. So basically, the ninth schedule is incorporated into the constitution to protect the land reform acts. So basically, the land reform act acts have been set out of the purview of judicial review. Right, friends. Over the time, many things have been incorporated into this ninth schedule. So, in this case, the validity of this ninth schedule has been examined. So, in this case also, to decide upon this case, the Honorable Supreme Court uh, actively uh, took the help of preamble of the constitution. So, basically said that 
uh, the principle of equality and social uh, justice that are there in the uh, preamble the honorable supreme court has opined right friends uh, this is some of the uh, information uh, that is about preamble of the constitution so i hope this information is useful to you and now we will try to <coughs> see some of the questions that are prelims questions that are asked uh, from the topic of preamble so the first question is uh, it is asked in two, uh, 2020 uh, the preamble to constitution of india is uh, basically four options are provided a part of the constitution but has no legal effect not a part of the constitution and has no legal effect either and the third option is a part of the constitution and has the same legal effect as any other part and the fourth option is a part of the constitution but has no legal effect independently of the other part so this is actually the correct option so basically uh, through the various judgment the honorable supreme court has declared that uh, preamble is actually part of the constitution but it has no effect, legal uh, effect i mean independently the preamble has no uh, significant value it uh, the value comes to preamble when we combine the preamble with the other parts of the constitution so that that is basically the meaning of this statement so the correct answer is answer d we will see another question that is also asked in 2020 itself uh, other than fundamental rights which of the following parts of the constitution of india reflect or reflects the principles and provisions of universal declaration of human rights that are declared in 1948 so the pm i mean the topic is uh, also uh, linked with 1948 the declaration of human rights so apart from fundamental rights what are the i mean uh, what are the parts of the constitution that resemble or reflect these principles so the options are basically the first option is preamble itself and next directive uh, principles of uh, state policy these are there in part 4 and fundamental duties so the option is uh, basically the correct option 1 2 3 so basically all these three also reflect the provision i mean principles that are there in the 1948 declaration of uh, human rights so option is d 1 2 and 3 right the next question we will see that is asked in 2017 the question is which of the following objectives is not embodied in the preamble of the constitution of india so the question is basically about which of the below is not mentioned not embodied in the preamble of the constitution so the options are liberty of thought economic liberty liberty of expression liberty of belief so as we have seen the words liberty of thought we have seen liberty of expression we have seen liberty of belief we have seen so the correct answer is answer b economic liberty the t, uh, it is not mentioned in the uh, preamble of the constitution so th this is the reason i asked you to remember the words exact words that are mentioned in the constitution that may come as a point in the prelims questions right the last question for today is that is also asked in 2017 the question is the mind of the makers of the constitution in the uh, constitution of india is reflected in which of the following so the options are the preamble of india the fundamental rights directive principles of state policy the fundamental duties so this also we have seen the correct answer is option a the preamble actually shows the aims and object sorry the aims and the vision of the founding fathers of india so that are mentioned in the preamble of the constitution uh, thank you guys thank you for uh, joining the class uh, that's all for today. See you next time. Bye.